god, there's too many jellyfish. Hello guys and welcome to another Opcast. We're in beautiful cool and gather this afternoon and I'm lucky enough to have the Blakey brothers. Ronnie. Ock, hello mate. Morn. <laughs> hello Ock. Pretty much the most influential or guaranteed the most influential brothers in the surfing media. You guys have been at it for a long time. Really long years. time. About 20 years, yeah. Started uh, with work experience for, for the big bro. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Tracks, right? What year was that? Yeah. Uh, well, back when Tracks was a big newspaper, 1992 I started. 1992. Uh, I did work experience in 92, started at the beginning of 94. So bailed on year 12 to go down and uh, work in Darlinghurst in Sydney, which is about the uh, least surf central place in the whole city. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, yeah, pretty much where, you know, the home of police corruption in the 90s and uh, <laughs> a lot of bad, crazy stuff went down there. I know far removed is. Just from, near King's uh, Cross. Yeah, that's it, right there. Right, <laughs> right, right there. at the height of all that sort of underbelly stuff. So it was an interesting time to be working on a surf mag in that location. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, long you, time. You, got, you must have some stories. Yeah, well, uh, on the first day uh, I got to, to work, when I uh, officially got hired, I was walking down from the King's Cross station. That's where mm. I used to have to get the, uh, the train down to work. And mm. uh, it was the morning after the gay and lesbian Mardi Gras, yep. which um, coming from up here at, at Newey, I didn't have like, a lot of exposure to, um, you know, all, all the, uh, just how big a deal that was in Sydney. Mm. And I remember walking down the, uh, from the train station and there was a river of uh, bubble bath out of one of the fountains in Sydney that was about eight foot high. <laughs> and uh, a bunch of guys in their undies all dancing around in it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, okay, well, not in Kansas anymore. And no, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a <laughs> colourful entry to Sydney for yeah, sure. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Where did you guys grow up when you were young? Uh, just, just down the coast here from Coolangatta actually. Uh, it was a much longer drive back then. It took us about an hour and a half to get up here to surf or, or watch the event here at Kira. But mm -hmm. uh, a little town called South Golden Beach, which is Golden Beach, yeah, near New Brighton. New Brighton. Um, mm -hmm. People might remember the name Jeremy Biles. Yes. He was our hometown hero growing up. Still is. Yeah, yeah Bilesy. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's he, where you guys grew up. That's where we grew yeah, up. Wow. Yeah, so just country, down there. little country town. Yep. Went to primary school at Billy Nudgel and yep. uh, high school at Mullumbimby. Yep, just in between Byron Bay and the Gold Coast. That's right. Mullumbimby high school captain, or just in case. Yeah. You know. Oh, you were? Yeah. yeah. You're People looking always... sharp today, my <laughs> yeah. goodness. Like, I was like, did yeah. you model when you were younger? Apparently, I'm like, <laughs> you can yeah. still model now. Actually, uh, Vaughn was the model when we okay. were kids. He, yep. uh, he had a big modelling uh, contract, <laughs> which um, could probably still be running to this day. He was the Cambantrum kid. So he was the face of uh, the worming. Oh, really? Tablets, yeah. He was oh, on no the boxes way. all around the, Thanks, the pharmacies Thanks, in the country, yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, he was the big time model. <laughs> How much money did your parents get for that? Uh, yeah, I haven't asked mum about that. Hopefully haven't there's you? a trust fund somewhere that we haven't tapped into yet. <laughs> I'm looking at my cute little baby at the moment thinking yeah. maybe he could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, it's a curse, mate. I, I remember going into a, a chemist when I was in high school and seeing my face on the, on the box, still uh, just behind the pharmacist there, and just going, oh, no. I don't know the chicks at school see that. <laughs> but yeah, nah, I knew he was a good place to grow up. Bolsey yeah, was so I knew he. Absolute legend, like Ronnie said. And, um, he was. When he was, uh, you know, young and uh, running the Newey board riders, you yep. know, we'd, we'd get these handwritten notes from Bolsey, who was club president, saying um, every mum needs to bring a, uh, a baked cake to uh, my place, which we're going to sell on the markets to buy, at the markets to yeah. buy a new club tent. Yeah. And you'd get down the markets and there'd be like two cakes, even though like 40 <laughs> mums had baked them. Because I think him and Smitty, you know, would uh, <laughs> enjoy quite a few cakes in an afternoon around Dewey. <laughs> what kind of cakes were they? Well, uh, they were all sorts of cakes, sponge, chocolate, but uh, the only cakes that made it to the markets were the carrot cakes, which the boys obviously didn't have much of a taste for. <laughs> the, the ones that came from Nimbin. Yeah, I think Nimbin. they got smashed. <laughs> So you guys, um, how different or or similar were your, with the past that you um, that you you know they were both really similar. Ronnie, now you're like the anchor man, you're the man for the WSL. What you love love your work on the WSL. Oh, thank you, mate. You and Joey, yeah. how are you, Joey? We love you and looking forward to your new little bub to see what he looks like. Mm. And um, yeah, so you similar past, but then you kind of kind of let's yeah. let's hear about that. Uh, well. Really similar when we were young. Uh, our, our dad surfed, he got us into surfing. 
Um, you surfing like Brunswick Bar and stuff, or the uh, beaches? Yeah, we, we actually got our first boards. I think we were uh, down at Scott's Head at the time. Okay. He lived down that way and uh, got us boards, but mum lived up the coast. So, you know, we grew up surfing, uh, just running down the street, just fell in love with it straight away, yep. like uh, How old were most you people then? do. Uh, we were still probably like nine and 12, yeah. okay. I'd say. Yeah. yeah, I think like, like some of my first surfs were in Newey board riders. Okay. Um, Matt Smith and Bilesy, yeah. who uh, my mum were friends with their mums, and so they were saying she'd bring him down and get him in the comp, which is like a pretty typical way to start in Australia rock, as you know, like the, yeah. the club scene is uh, really good for sort of getting kids into it and making them feel like a part of something. Um, but, you know, I clearly remember Ronnie's first ever early when uh, mum you know wouldn't let him surf out front because mm. knew he's just a giant long beach with channels and rips everywhere yeah and uh she finally sort of said okay you can go for an early tomorrow morning and he he uh, climbed into his wetty uh just after he went to bed got into his wetty and <laughs> then slept at the base of my bed on the floor just so <laughs> i wouldn't forget him and uh, I woke up the next morning, it was just howling onshore, and I just went, I'm not going, I'm oh, not no. going surfing. You but he went out anyway, he just, yeah, he just took off by himself. And then I got busted because- uh, He went by himself? Yeah, mum was dark on me for not looking <laughs> after him. But yeah, so uh, after that though, Ron was, um, yeah, we were just all part of sort of that, that newy crew, I guess we were all mm. called at the time. And um, yeah, we just grew up surfing together. And then I got a job at Tracks after doing work experience. Uh, did a couple of two and a half years there as sort of uh, the cadet journo or the junior and then after I left uh, the deputy editor uh, well Ridgeway and Neil Ridgeway and Wayne Dart at the time they wanted to take on another junior okay and uh, I think I just said Ronnie had done work experience uh, Darty wanted him to apply for the job they did a full you know nationwide screening and did the whole process and Ronnie got the job there and so that led us down the same the part. media part. Yeah, yeah, the media part. Yeah, work and in the same office. And now you're the editor for Surfing World. How long have you been with Surfing World for? Uh, well, I'm uh, about two issues off doing 100 mags. No way. 100 Surfing World. So uh, that, that's congratulations. about... Congratulations. Well, I don't even know the maths on that. It'd be yeah. about eight years eight or years, around there. Yeah. yeah. So, long time. Yeah. But funnily enough, like uh, I did 100 mags when I was at Tracks and Waves. Um, it's an awesome thing to go through those archives and see those old trips. And you mm. know, they're the trips Ronnie and I grew up on yeah. reading. I think yeah. my first ever surfing world that I ever got was a subscription from my grandparents when I was about 11 and you were on the cover. I know. So what? yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you it's know embedded in, in uh, Australian, yeah. in, in this culture of Australian surfing for yeah, sure. It's I'm really stoked that they're still going, you know, with social media because I love to buy them. When I love to buy them is like when I go away on a trip, mm. I'll go to the news agent and buy surfing world yeah. and tracks, put them in my backpack and then read it on the plane or read it where you get there somewhere like you're in the towers with no television. So yeah. that's how you... And it's nice, read. isn't it? It's a different read. It's yeah. like much more relaxing. You got your own time. You're not trying to shove it in your face. Mm. So yeah, that's that still stokes me out. But then um, on the same token, you know, all this uh, podcast land and... Um, yeah. All these new forms of media are just, just, just give you so much surfing. I mean, you'd remember when yeah. we were grommets, mate. My our first ever surf movie was uh, a copy of, a pirated copy copy of uh, Filthy Habits, mm. and that was the only surfing we had, other than like the odd snippet on the news or something. Yeah, so right. we just watched it, watched it, watched it, played, pause the surf shot on it, and all that sort of stuff. And in the end, it was just a chewed up, you know, it just was just like a mangled <laughs> tennis ball that had, I don't know, yeah. David yeah. had been. But then do you remember when uh, we had uh, our stepdad used to build these concrete tanks and he built a tank for, for Dick Hall and uh, I think Dick maybe didn't have the money to pay for the tank and gave him a, a huge, just a, a chest of all his entire surf video collection and he was distributing a lot of movies from the States at the time too so we, I've never even really thought about it like this but we actually sort of took on this all these classic surf movies and like when other kids were kind of getting into momentum generation type flicks you know the soundtrack to the movies we were watching included like voiceovers from like matt george and yeah it was almost <laughs> maybe our kind of commentary baptism yeah. i don't know it, it was like maybe that's where it started but you know yeah. we were like listening to amazing surf stories you know stories about jean dom surfing pipeline yeah, and yeah. Just like switch foot. Yeah. Back door. Bizarre like that we sort of tapped into that, but mm. I guess we got a good history lesson there and yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think just as far as our like our journeys, though they they went in a pretty similar line yeah. for a, a long time. Definitely, yeah. uh, Vaughn um, sort of led the way for me. Got into the magazines. Um, I followed him into that, and then uh, ended up at Waves as well. Yeah. And then I guess with the the way media sort of fractured and, and took on all these sort of different platforms, then our paths kind of. Changed, changed a lot. The, yeah, and so na that's you now being the WSL anchor man. Yeah. And um, what did were you at any stage thinking I want to commentate, or it just fell in, in your lap? Uh, no, after I you left. You are good. Thanks, Oc. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of working with you yeah. a bunch of times too, which yeah. is great. And that that was kind of uh, you know, the early days for me were just bizarre because mm. I was suddenly sitting sitting there calling events with you and, um, you know. We also had the opportunity to work on a, a panel show here in Australia, we which did. was fantastic. Yeah, for Fox Sports, that was really fun too. But uh, yeah, no, it was uh, a bizarre thing after I left the mags because the broadcast, the online um, broadcasting thing was really just starting to gain some momentum. Yeah. Um, and I think I was just in the right place at the right time, really. Okay. I'd gone freelance, I had some time on my hands. Yeah. Um, I was busy, so. And Big <laughs> Blake was busy. Yeah. <laughs> because his brother's good too. I've come yeah. out of the hill. <laughs> well, we and did the 2008 Pie Masters. We did. With, uh, yeah. the, that year, the water went all chalky brown. Yeah, and uh, and uh, there was this classic moment I'll never forget where we, uh, we were sitting there and I think Kelly got a wave and a stingray jumped out. He did. Remember that? Yes, yes. Was <laughs> and then uh, later on. I was like, did you see that? <laughs> he I was might rewind that. Like, pause. <laughs> He was, was so stoked stingray. on the stingray. And then yeah. the other thing that uh, really uh, excited you at that comp was someone was dressed up as Santa down at off, the, uh, off the wall <laughs> getting a couple of big barrels on a sup. Yeah. <laughs> and you were going, Santa's out there getting tans, I can't it's believe it. It's going to be Christmas oh, yeah. soon. You're, you're renovating a house at the moment. Is that your future house for you, yeah. you and your wife and your kids at yep. Avalon there? Three kids. Three yeah. kids. Mm. Porn? Yeah, no kids. yeah, two boys. Two boys. Uh, 12 and 10, turning 13 this year. and. Uh, not big surfers. Not big surfers. The, the little one, uh, Iggy, he likes. He, he'll get out there for me. You know, he'll he'll go like, all right, I'll come out for a wave, and he'll get a few. I took him out the past just recently, yeah. and he got a couple of great ones, and we're starting to feel it. You yeah. know, you know that little yeah. moment where it goes from like this is a bit of a chore and Too hard to get through to just all of a sudden they're going, hang on a minute, this that was pretty fun. fun. Let's get back into the WSL, Ronnie. Yeah. Vaughn too. I mean, yeah. I want to hear you guys' uh, um, advice, like. It's just the surfing level that was incredible, John John Florence. Yeah. Um, no, the, at, at, at Margaret River. Yeah. The, like the whole Australian I, leg, I thought, was yeah was pretty solid. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, the waves yeah. and the speed and those turns that he was doing, yeah. I had to say that's the best surfing I've ever seen. Do you agree? Mm, yeah, definitely. I, I think, uh, you know, I've been working on the, the events for, for about 10 years now, um, on and off. and. Um, just to see the, I, I just think Margaret's provides a great platform for the competitors too. Yeah. I mean, it, it's copped some flack over the years. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I think just surfing has evolved mm -hmm. now to where the, the surfing that the competitors are doing really suits this location. Mm. There's a, a good opportunity to see the guys maybe get to the box yeah. if it, that comes on. Uh, North Point was a, a good experiment. Yeah, I think, it, I think it reminded us all like, just how much the tour needs some new waves, mm. some new locations. Because mm. even though it wasn't firing at North Point, but it, it was, was just so refreshing. Yeah. Refreshing to see yeah, those guys point. tested at, at a new location. Yeah. So I really hope that the WSL takes that yeah. into consideration. But the surfing at Mainbreak, yeah. I just, I loved it. Just to see big offshore conditions mm. that still allowed the competitors to do high performance surfing yeah. uh, was, was That's awesome. a good point you make because a lot of the spots on tour that the client says that there's lots of good spots mm. around there that they could be mobile. Oh, definitely. Like, yeah. Remember, remember yeah, Portugal's Cape? always like that. There's Portugal's always like kind that. of ways happening on, on the other like side of the mm. peninsula. Uh, Brazil's like that. Um, but even more so than that, I just think that it would be nice to explore some of the other world class waves that mm. are obviously going off at, at yeah. different stages throughout the year. I, I just think, uh, you know, everyone would probably be able to throw up a, a couple of great recommendations for new locations if yeah, they put their mind to it. Uh, what's sure. what's a spot you'd love to see? G-Land, yeah. G-Land would be we cool. We had an event there, you know, when Luke Egan won that year and 
Oh, there's so many. You could have a mobile yeah. contest in the Mentowies mm. without a problem. Mm. We've done that one year um, yeah. for the OP Pro, OP Pro Boat Challenge. We, we had like three boats and the police, the army escorted us around, so they kicked out all the other boats <laughs> at, the, at the spot. So Perfect. It was epic. Yeah. Who won? Well, I won. Yeah. <laughs> but the only problem was... I love this story. Yeah, the only problem was... I don't know if I've told this story on the Opcast before, but the contest director was super weird and making weird calls. So we were pretty much over. It was me, Andy, Sonny, um, Bruce. Um, oh, yeah, just then there was a few more, but it was Sonny mainly, like, was like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to split the prize money mm. because this kind of director's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. And we're like, yeah, that sounds good. Like one day we went and surfed macaronis yeah. and it was pumping four to six foot. We went switch foot the whole heat for an hour. <laughs> and, and we were all, you know, we couldn't surf switch foot, obviously. And um, the contest director was freaking out. But anyway, yeah, so I won the money. I won $30,000, but I had to split it. And, but then I had to go home and you know how much we pay tax in Australia on $30,000? Mm -hmm. I lost about 15 grand. Whoa. Unbelievable. So the whole thing was like there was going to be no losers. Uh, and lost. then the only person who lost but, was you. Yeah, and I won. Well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually just think also there's some proven locations. You know, you think of Karamas, it delivered mm. in a big way. Uh, when it ran and it's it delivered at the QS level it for the, the Mad Hooey's event. The Mad Hooey's, yeah. And um, I just think it's a, you know, Bali's a no-brainer. It's a really popular destination for surfers. Um, there's great options as backup well, you venues. Backup venues. I mean, you could but, go to Geelong, you could go to Desert. Somewhere. You could go to the, just to the Bukit, you know. You could go to Oki's Left. You could go to Oki's Left. Oh, if you can goodness. afford it. <laughs> you know, as much as like we've spoken about the men's side of things, the women's side is super interesting as well yeah my like crazy oh, so good i was yeah. going to bring that up they've yeah. gotten yeah. so good back in the day um you know in the connoisseur area like the women's would be on and the the it just like no one everyone's gone except for the yeah. women you know what i mean and uh now no one leaves they like everyone's watching Nah, it's crazy i and never it, used to leave by the way but i'm really the cool. only one that stays <laughs> yeah because I've, I've loved the women and just the way they've uh they've evolved yeah. they've gotten so good definitely yeah it seems like there's a similar thing happening on the women's tour to yeah, the men's yeah. as well where there's just this a, another level of performance coming from those surfers who have been outside of title contention or struggled to qualify in the past and now they're stepping up and it's kind of rattling the, those typical contenders a little bit and uh yeah same on the men's side there's veterans who are you know sweating for results all of a sudden yeah. it's going to be really cool to watch yeah this but year though john john's like i know but that's what i was going to ask you guys do you think he, he's um, reignable? Can you rein him in at this stage? Oh, I don't Maybe think not. So. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> you, so you're shaking your head like, nah, well, you don't I, think so. And my I, my I pick for the either. world title the past couple of years and even going into this season was Medina, just yeah. on, on the based on the fact that he's so good under pressure. Uh, he. Are you saying that the one guy could is Medina? Yeah, and, and I just think Medina's kind of, he just doesn't kind of look himself at the moment. Mm. You know, like I, I I don't know. Yeah, in the past down, couple of yeah, seasons, yeah, right. I don't think there's a surfer that's had tougher calls than, than Gabriel yeah. as well. Yeah. But then he gets some that go his way as well. So yeah. I don't know. It's just a, mm. an interesting one. But I keep saying to myself, like, Medina will never start a year as bad as he started last year. And now this year he started the same way, mm. uh, even worse. And yeah, he's got I'm, a lot of work I'm to do. I'm kind of looking at a Medina that could maybe rein him in or if Kelly went on a, a mad roll, maybe, mm. which I, would surprise me, but it could happen. Yeah. It's hard to, like, I just was not expecting John John to come straight out of a world title year yeah, and that sort of campaign and that sort of energy and getting home and all those celebrations that you, you know, you, then, you know all yeah. about. But, and then just turn up and just be completely uh, better. 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 And much better. Like, in market, like, noticeably, noticeably on a whole better. different level. Yeah. And uh, surfing like he just deserves to be world champ instead of sort of taking that second year syndrome or, yeah. or the second year off. Or, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm calling it. Wow, well, if he stays like that, he could break Kelly Sater's record. Mm. But anyway, let's move on, Ronnie. <laughs> um, greatest single heat you've ever called? Oh, there's a lot. Actually. There is a there's lot, a, and that's they, a hard question. Actually, uh, best surfing, like, there's a couple of different ones because there, there's kind of performances that have been won on turns. Yeah. Uh, John John at, at Margaret's was pretty yeah. spectacular call to, to see someone like put that many amazing heats together mm -hmm. um, was was pretty awesome but 
really he he just didn't have anyone on the same par as him in that no, contest so that they weren't really like those kind of epic battle heats they were just fun heats to watch performance wise but um I mean, definitely one that stands out to me and one that I, I really treasure was the final in Tahiti that I called with you, with uh, Andy. Andy. Yeah. Um, that was Andy's... Pretty emotional, yeah. Yeah, Andy's last event win. And, um, you know, like, who, who could have known at that point that that would have been the, the last yeah, event that he'd take out? Um, so I think myself really lucky to have been there in that moment and to be there with uh, yourself. And um, obviously, you couldn't help but let your bias creep in during that call, which was <laughs> was, <like> that <laughs> was unbelievable. Um, but That's you know, I, I was, you know, it <laughs> no, was no way. It was hard not to kind of let the emotion of that moment take over because I was sitting next to you. You had tears streaming down your face. You obviously knew what it meant to Andy. Yeah. And uh, it it was just pretty special. Like everyone um, was a CJ or Damien in the final with him. Um, I think it might have been uh, C CJ. CJ, yeah, mm. CJ. Um, CJ was in the final with him. Uh, it's usually when you're talking about Tahiti, it's one of the hot goods. So I knew I was yeah. going to be right. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think even CJ, you know, was was Stoked. Yeah. was over the moon. Like Kelly and Andy had that intense rivalry, but when Kelly lost to Andy, he just seemed so elated that Andy was. Mm on his I way it, to this this it's, win yeah it surprised andy i mean we were staying together like we always do in tahiti and you know like he he lost a lot of motivation like previous so so like he was so stoked it surprised yeah. himself and yeah we had such a ball we had a really nice time that the whole the yeah. whole event actually yeah because joel and joel got knocked out early so it was just me and andy at the in the house by ourselves and and yeah we, we, it was a very nice bonding time and he won and then we went to Puppy A Day and had a real good yeah. time. I remember that being on the point when he came yeah. in and actually called yeah. Lindy and yeah. got to tell Lindy yeah. that it, that he'd won the event and uh, that was pretty special. But there's there's different. I don't know. You have different memories for different situations. Like Owen's win on the Gold Coast was really special just because of the. So special. You know, mm. It was a, it oh. was emotional. But then you yeah. get heats where both guys are just on, and um, you know I, I just think back to. You know, John John Florence and Gabrielle in Tahiti, you know, close heat there. And I don't know, there's that sort of seesawing battles, which I like watching unfold, but I'm just a bit of a cream puff. And um, <laughs> when I, I have a, I'm calling a heat where there's some kind of emotion involved and there's a greater story unfolding yeah. than the performance. Yeah. That's what I like. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, the, the first CT event that I went to as a, um, a junior at Tracks Magazine, uh, was your your win at Bells, oh, no and way. and that I, for me that that actually made me fall in love with pro surfing that really? contest because wow. just Bells is such a you yeah. know a rooty event to go to and, and watch unfold, and it just didn't really dawn on me how important it was to to people, competitive surfing you know when it was someone's life and uh, it was obviously the the beginning of a, a big comeback role for you, and you know much like. Andy getting his win or Mick mm. having his win at Bells as well where he was able to dedicate it to his brother. Yeah. You got the opportunity finally to dedicate a win to your dad. Yeah. And I remember watching you on stage and I was like <laughs> misting up and it was just an emotional oh, event win. I was win. balling my eyes out. <laughs> yeah. I was in the car park too. I was just uh, right there just, you know, the, the emotion of something about Bells as well though. Don't you reckon? Like, oh, you know, yeah. to, to be there, to your yeah. relationship with the wave, to, to see, you know, everything you'd been through and to be in that car park where, you remember, it was starting to get dark. It everyone was. was forced down. Everyone was wanted it so bad, it happened. Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Are now. you really? Yeah, mate, 100%. <laughs> like, it was just... Yeah, that was a good one. It was yeah. just so I can totally relate to what Ronnie's saying and, like, those moments uh, when you get to be a part of them in the flesh. Yeah, it's one thing to watch them on the on the broadcast, and the broadcast is unbelievable. But yeah, well, let's man, oh man, when you enough, get down there. Yeah, enough oh, about me. Oh, no, enough about we got, me. We're up. Let's um, <laughs> let's talk about the WSL. I mean, yeah. they've been working so hard to elevate this sport, surfing, and which they've done an amazing job of. Um, what do you think? Uh, what's the most um, important improvement you think they've made? Definitely a lot of improvements in the the broadcast. I think um, there's just a uniformity, you know, obviously before the brands uh, controlled the broadcast and everyone had their, their, their different style and I loved all those different styles mm -hmm. but I think for anyone that was sort of a, an audience member, member returning 
to watch the show, you kind of could get lost in what the messaging was from mm -hmm. each of the sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's just, it's just nice. I, I think the surfers would agree to have this like kind of um, consistent product yeah. um, that continues to evolve. But for me, the biggest leap has been in the women's okay. surfing. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. I think the, the WSL committed to, to raising the prize money to adding world-class locations like Fiji and Trestles to the schedule for the women. Uh, they went from six events to 10 events and all that investment that the WSL made there has just been paid in full with amazing performances and uh, an evolution that continues year after year. Um, you know, I, I think it, it's not just, we're seeing it after the Australian League, it's not just four surfers fighting for a world title now. You know, from one to 10 uh, and even some battlers in the rest of the top 16, um, it, it's just amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's move along, Vaughan. Music, <laughs> Dunes of Doom. Still in the band? Yeah, mate. You guys yeah. are playing soon, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> Dunes of Doom. Ah, uh, yeah. You guys have been still going. for a while. Well, How's Ozzy going? Yeah, mate. Ozzy's going good. Yep. He's, uh, he's living up at uh, Suffolk as well okay. now, so he's uh, moved up from Sydney. and. Um, nice. So you guys all are all together. together. You guys are playing at the Great Northern soon, or did you just play? We just played at the Northern. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was good. We play there all the time. You do? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Great Northern being Byron Bay. Byron Bay. Local. Good pub. Good, good pub. pub. Good yeah. solid pub. But then, um, yeah, we still play. Um, you know, we're still lucky enough to go around the world and do our little... Sh I don't know if you'd call it music, mate. It's just sort of almost like a, a rolling thunder party kind of <laughs> thing more than it. It's just... You know, more than anything, it's an excuse for four best mates to hang out all the time. Yeah, that's it. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of um, people who. You I got guess a after pretty a long, big yeah, cult following. There's a good little, yeah, good crew of people who uh, get into sort of jumping on board the the fun train with us. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's still going, mate. It's still awesome fun. Unreal. Everyone's still re it. recording albums and having a good time. But yeah, yeah. It. it's just more, more than anything. Um, you know, like it's like surfing. It just keeps all your friends together and doing something that you love to do and yeah it's yeah it's sick fun well, I'd i don't love know to. what else to say about it actually oh, no you don't have to say anything <laughs> else i want to join the band well, <laughs> or a band do you remember singing with us at uh, the sands one night yes yeah <laughs> no. i had to say yes didn't you <laughs> <laughs> being the editor for surfing we're one yeah. of the longest running um public surf publications in the world, yeah. second to surfer surfer magazine um, in america started in a real similar way surfer yeah. started when um uh, John Severson, maybe? I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm not up mm. on the history of Surfer, but I know he started Surfer as almost like a, a promo leaflet for his surf movies. Yeah. Okay. So he used that as a yeah. way to sort of say, here are the surfers that are going to be in my movies. And and eventually it just became this monthly publication. And, yeah. and uh, Bob Evans did the same for Surfing mm -hmm. World. So 1962, wow, same wait. years the uh, Rolling yeah. Stones played their first gig. And, wow. Yeah, as Ronnie said. Kelly 62. won his first world title, so in yeah, a long, long time ago. Yeah, I think so. Kelly won his first <laughs> He wasn't even born. He's yet, still really. going. But, uh, and no, still going. Uh, but is there pressure though? Is there pressure? Because it's been going that long. Is there pressure? To yeah, yeah. Just actually, make it month to month, every mag that comes out. Look you at him. Feel mate. the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> look there it is. Wow, There's the pressure. All his hair. <laughs> First ball, baby. Oh, mate, every editor's bald eventually. But, uh, <laughs> is the pressure, like the deadlines and stuff? Is, mate, it, the only, uh, is it stressful? There's, yeah, it's stressful because um, oh, my time management sucks. So <laughs> I, I leave everything to the last three days and then cram and you it. you got here two hours. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mate, everyone won't. But um, no, the, the only uh, pressure that I care about, like, because mm. the, the stresses of deadlines and stuff, just, it's so... Uh, so cyclic and familiar to me now that it doesn't really affect me deeply but what does uh, sort of play into my um, thought patterns I suppose when I'm making a mag is that people bought Surfing World in 1962 yeah. uh, and they were introduced to surfing through guys like Midget and Nat yeah, wow. and um, those guys Nat Young, Midget Farrelly Nat Young, Midget Farrelly, um, Midget just passed away, uh, Nat's still going strong, yep. speak to him often, okay. speak to George Greeno often. Wow. I'm in touch with all these legends because mm. uh, this was their, you know, this was the magazine, uh, you know, 10 years before Tracks, yeah. um, that meant something to them and that launched their careers and they feel sentimental and they feel like the content of it needs to be important. And so uh, for me, uh, at the start of every month, I've always got to make sure that there's something in there that those guys can touch base with. Um, and the, the people who love those guys can touch base with. Um, 
you know, I get uh, guys like Bruce Usher, Albie Thousand, wow. original contributors to Surfing World, the first mm. issue even. Mm. And um, they'll just wander into the office or call up. And it's just this, mate, it's just the living monuments to uh, and, and time machines to the past. I mean, you can get first hand stories mm. on the birth of surfing in Australia from these guys. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the only pressure I feel uh, is never ever to do with um, criticisms deadlines. or, yeah, deadlines or criticisms on comment boards no. or like, you know, uh, conspiracies about what's going on in surfing and, and the power brokers ruling it or you know, all yeah, this yeah. crap we've heard so many times. Mm. The only thing I care about is that Nat Young can pick up the mag and feel like he's still connected to what's going on in surfing, in surfing wow. and that Sabre Norris can pick up the same mag wow. and yeah. as an 11 year old girl yeah. feel like there's something in there for her. So that's, oh, cool. yeah. that's where I come from where I make every issue. That's and deep. some days I feel like I nail it and uh, some months I feel like I completely miss it. And, <laughs> You it's know, you have good and bad good. issues. Yeah. But I mean, mate, like, we're all part of this fabric. Mm. And, um, uh, yeah, it's like, it's important to me that, you know, now, like, even I just came from Crescent Head today and I'll, I'll have a coffee down there in the morning with uh, a handful of 70, 80 year old guys who are stoked on the mag. On, on the mag. Yeah. A very interesting question, and it's coming up 2020 surfing in the Olympics mm. in Japan. Yeah. What do you think about that? Super interesting. It's going to be bizarre. I'm not. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I, I. I actually haven't really given it too much thought. I'm interested to see who represent represents each country and who and taps many? back into their heritage. Like, are you going to be surfing for Italy? I know. Like, there's an Leo, opportunity. Yeah. Like I, yeah. They're going to need teams, aren't they? Maybe. I think Maybe. Be in it. Yeah. You could be on. So I know. I know. I started training for a reason. Yeah, my commentary buddy Strada <laughs> Wasilewski is kind of putting his hand up for Poland. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's just a bizarre thing to think who's going to be representing what countries, you know? That's going really fun. I've never even some, thought about that. There's yet. some world class surfers out there with some like pretty different heritage. And, uh, you know, we could have a freaking gold medalist from just really? some non surf country. It's bizarre. Wow, and then, secondary to that, I think. And it's probably actually the most important thing is uh, what is going to be the stage for this because it's going to be surfing like completely out there for everyone to, to kind see. of break down and to have a say on and yeah. is this just a laughable sport or is well, this something serious and no. we all know how serious it is it's so and it's serious. like is it is it going to be represented well on the beach breaks of Japan? I don't feel like it will be. Well, I think I think they need to get. Kelly's wave pull together, they need a left and a right, yeah. and they need a really cool criteria. And uh, I, I think, think, you're right. I think I that mean, would be epic. It is scary because, I mean, if there's no typhoon or, it, you know, in the, it, it could be one foot and mm. they're not going to be able to have it. You've got to have it, right? Yeah. Mm. And if it's this big in Japan, people will laugh at it. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe not a Felipe Toledo doing an air, but they're not all going to be doing that. I mean, not even one foot, it could be flat. Japan yeah. gets flat. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, 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 interesting. Gets really good ways too. So like I said, if they could have it as a, you know, call it on the day. If there's pump and surf and there's a good swell running and they can hold it, then that's great. But if they had a, a you know, a wave pool as a backup, that'd be pretty sick. Like the one thing I'm looking forward to the most about uh, Japan is Sally Fitzgibbons hopefully competing because she gave up a career as a potential Olympian. She, oh, she won two junior gold medals uh, in the junior, like world, you know, whatever the junior level of Olympics is. So uh, she's a gold medal winner for Australia. She was a track and field athlete. She yeah. gave that up to pursue surfing. Wow. So I mean, as just a, a story that I'll, I'm yeah, already looking so forward to, film. imagine Sally Fitz winning the gold getting over there and it. winning it as a lifelong dream since she was eight years old, but she gave up to pursue surfing. So yeah. that to me sounds like she could do well, it. She could do the decathlon a... and like do the run, <laughs> the high jump, the get her in on the <laughs> back in the athletics, the pole vault. <laughs> That'd be great. She That'd probably be, could. actually that's the next step, isn't it? Get surfing into the decathlon, <laughs> oh, and yeah. then like yeah, we'll see <laughs> Sally and like, Nick shot. Fanning like probably win. Oh, uh, I, I, well, let's move on. You know what? A question that uh, I've um, wanted to ask you guys. Uh, do surfers, you think, I know they do, but um, how much do the guys on tour and girls um, pay attention to what you guys say in the webcast? Oh, 
Heaps. Heaps? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of attention. Um, well, I know they're watching it. Yeah, they, they generally... Um, Do you get much feedback? Well, the, the heat analyzer is basically a, a coaching tool. Mm. So um, surfers really go back and they analyze their own performance, usually yep. with their coaches. And, you know, like in my position, often, you know, you're... you're kind of rambling you're saying a lot of stuff and sometimes things come out and they can be misinterpreted and um, almost can be sort of taken on a, in a compl completely different way to how you meant it yeah um, but yeah sometimes you, oh, I've you been get known to do that yeah sometimes I mean, you get feedback from the surfers yeah um, you know sometimes they chuckle at things that you say and, and sometimes and they don't like it. it and sometimes yeah sometimes they don't like it yeah so yeah. you they'll come up to you and tell you that um, Certain people, or yeah, maybe sometimes you hear it secondhand. Secondhand, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I actually hard. love it. I love it when someone. I, I mean, love it when someone comes back to you and basically tells you if they're unhappy with something. Yeah, because yeah, it, for sure. You want to know. You want to know. I mean, surfing is very subjective. Like mm. you, you can't please everyone. No. And some people like one surfer, and some people like the other surfer. And you, isn't that yeah. correct? Yeah, I don't. I don't actually ever. I don't feel to like my thoughts based on how the surfers are going to feel about what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, you and can't, otherwise you're not going to say anything. No, and, and, you know, more often than not, I'm trying to tee up the guy next to me to kind of, Back you, you know, have his say. Yeah. You know, whether it was Ross Williams before and Ross was really good, always had a, a really honest From him, kind yeah. of review of, of what he was watching unfold. And now Pete Mel and, and Pete Pete's gets into too. it as well. And it's great. And I like to sort of, back and forth with those guys yeah. uh, about what I'm watching unfold. But yeah, I've definitely had feedback in the past from yeah. people who, who aren't happy with yeah. what's being said. And um, social media, um, how big of a role do you think that's got in the sport? I mean, who doesn't wake up and Have look at Instagram straight yeah. away? <laughs> um, big part. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. It's just um, that's just how you get your surf. Like you know, we you all get your fix. when we're all grommets, we all wish we there was just surfing on TV all the time. I was mm. never there. No. I used to sit through you know uh, three hours of wide world of sports, just waiting for the surfing. One little clip of surfing, and mm. often it was just this random little thing at the end in the credits, and I'd mm. still wait for it for mm. three hours. And now, yeah. you know, I can lie in bed and wake up, roll over in the middle of the night, can't sleep, start flicking through the gram and just see. Oh, that's just massive. It's just yeah, how we. Massive. That's just how we uh, basically eat our surfing now. It's just, it's just always there. It's on our phone. We're all super stoked about it. Super stoked. I think the only really downside to uh, social media is just <clears throat> there's this uh, tendency to just kind of tear in and rip people down, and um, mm. more so uh, just as a I, I, it's a big, I don't know how this culture of, of tearing stuff down and, and negativity where it came from or how yeah. it started, but. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people out there who, who just want to say yeah. crappy stuff, man. And it just bums me yeah. out. That's the only thing that bums me about it. Yeah. You know, I don't like going onto uh, social media and, and you know, like the world's not perfect. We all know that. There's all sorts of shit going on. And, um, you know, surfing needs to be held accountable for some of the things that, that go on, like, you know, exposing new countries or new waves and, and mm. surf tourism is a big one that can kind of have negative effects on stuff. But generally speaking, we all surf because we fucking love it, man. Yeah. Like, that's why we surf. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just, uh, I, <coughs> if, that, I, if that, I want bad yeah. news, I'll watch the news. I don't yeah. need it coming through my surf feed. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, and I do watch a lot of news and there's a lot of radical shit yeah. that's happening right now and yeah. I'm kind of scared. Yeah, um, exactly, mate. So you don't need, you know, to go no. to the place where you love and you feel good about life to be mm. another version of that. Mm. Not saying ignore it, just yeah. saying like, I know. be stoked about what you got. Yeah, well. I mean, in saying that, the surf culture, do you think it's changed? I mean, obviously it's changed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Changed radically, but only because, I mean, when we were Groms, man, and you'd be the same too, like, it was just like this, you know, we all went surfing because it was just this fantasy. It was just like mm. the best thing you could ever do with your time. And there's a, what's that Mickey Dora quote about, you know, life is a waste of time, surfing's as good a way to waste it as anything else. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's not something serious. It doesn't have to be all it that serious. Be, no. We like to talk about it seriously because it means a lot to us. But um, at the end of the day, we do it because it's awesome. Yeah. And I think surf culture uh, is just expanding. It's just expanding into places where, you know, when we were kids, we 
kind of wished it was there. We wished it was on TV. We wished people had access mm. to it. And now it's actually there. People don't like it anymore. Too many people yeah. surfing or stuff. I know what stuff. you mean. I mean, mate, I got, you've got to teach your kids where the soul <coughs> is in surfing. Exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. especially, you know, like, you know, I've got Jay and he just wants to compete. I yeah. mean, but there is another side and there's a lot of soul out there in surfing. Yeah. You know, just look at Dave Rustovich and. And well, just um, look at look at you going for a, a wave, or, or any of us all here going for a surf. If first thing in the morning, watching the sun come up, and like you know, mm. it's not a spirit. It doesn't have to be spiritual. It just has to be something that you go. Well, that's how many spiritual other in are itself. This? Like how many other people are experiencing the this sun, part of the day? A beautiful fit sunrise and or a beautiful sunset, yeah. and, and getting barrel. And you know and, that everyone yeah. who's out there, like haters or lovers, are all yeah. If they're surfing, they're experiencing that. So yeah, yeah. I think culture. Uh, for the most part, is just expanding into places it hasn't been before, mm. and um, that's really enlightening a lot of people. And yep. other people pr probably are laughing at it, you know, just going, "What are these guys doing with their time?" <laughs> and that's where that Mickey yeah, thing comes in. I do get caught up in that. I think we all do. Well, mm. not everyone, but but it's a good point you make. Yeah. As brothers, did you feed off each other? Did you push each other, or did you fight each other? <laughs> all oh. three, mate. All three. Hundred percent. What did you, you fight over when you were kids? Waves? Ooh. Dropping in? Um, Girls? Nah. Never chicks, but uh, I, <coughs> when Ronnie was uh, a grom and starting to get into surfing and stuff, um, I don't know how stoked I was to have him tagging along. I think I was like the big brother who always wanted to have a little bit of distance between me and my little brother. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Ronnie was so uh, such a frother, like, <laughs> one of his uh, sort of go-to moves in the surf hawk, if I was like paddling past, mm. And I saw him flying down the line, like kick water in his face as he was like flying oh, really? past me. <laughs> yeah, bully, total bully. <laughs> but then if he did a snap near me, like I was duck diving, he'd do a snap, and then as he was sailing off down the line, he'd be staring at me <laughs> like, over the back of the wave, making sure I'd seen it. <laughs> Stuff like sure. that. And then um, later on, like when we worked together at uh, uh, I was at Waves, he was on tracks, but they were next door to each other in uh -huh. the same office. And we had a uh, huge Barney in there one time where. Uh, we were fighting over some story. It was, I think it was a Jack Johnson story of all things. And mm. I ended up grabbing his head and running me out of the office and putting it through a wall. Oh, no. And then uh, he turned around and sort of started throwing punches. And how old, you, we, how old were you guys then? 20, oh, been 20s. 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 That's too old to be fighting as nah. brothers. No, it was good. <laughs> it was good. It was good stuff. No, uh, actually, a really good fight happened early on. Um, my dad was really good friends with Gil Glover. Um, when we were growing up, Gil Glover used to shape boards for rabbit and stuff. And um, Gil, for whatever reason, owned dad some money. <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he said, he said, oh, you can shape my son a board. And yeah. so Gil shaped me a board, best board. Wow. Wish I still had it. In fact, I've been in contact with Gil and he said he's gonna uh, shape me a replica, so that'd be cool. But I came home from school one day, I'd had this board for just a couple of weeks, and I got off the bus and I raced home. Surf was really good. We used to get a view of the surfers who were coming down into our, our hometown. And um, I raced home and the board rack was empty. And I was like, new board's gone. And I raced over the dunes and looked out in the surf, and you know, there's nothing worse than seeing someone ride your, your new board. Better really, than you. Better than you, and it was Better born. than you, and it was born. <laughs> And he was surfing it, and um, I know why he was riding it. He had this like uh, this old dog that had been broken like two times, and mm. Dad repaired it and like put steel in the middle of it so it wouldn't break again, and it just <laughs> weighed a ton. And uh, I got home, and I was just in a rage, just so angry. And there was a, had you it the was board sort yet? of like still like oh, on the, the rack, like in the garage, mm. like drying. And uh, there was just a hammer and a chisel, oh, no. like right there. And I just took to the bottom of his board with a hammer and a chisel <laughs> and just hacked all these holes into the bottom of his board. And uh, mm. I totally forgot about it after the rage had ended. And yeah. anyway, we were upstairs uh, after dinner that night. Yeah. I'd, there'd better already been a blow up about How him. How old were you guys then? Oh, we would have been like 15, in it. Yeah. Okay. 13 or something. Yeah. And uh, I just said to him, like, we're, we'd made peace by yeah. that point. And uh, I said to him, hey, I, I've got to tell you something, but yeah, you can't tell mum. And he was like, what? And I said, come downstairs. And I like went downstairs. I kind of had a smile on my face. I was like, 
Look what I've done to your boy. Look what I did to your boy. Fight straight away. And he just went, Mom! <laughs> just screamed out my mom, and she came just barreling down the stairs. And uh, he was allowed to ride my board until I paid for his board to get fixed. Double win for me. Or... Yeah. So yeah, he was a great big brother. <laughs> no, no, that was uh, one of only a couple, yeah. handful of fights. So, but uh, not I will say, like, in, in um, like more recent years, you know, Ronnie has taken on the role of big brother for me. Yeah. Because. Uh, but you're uh, big brother. Yeah, well, I think he, uh, he. I'm the big brother, but he's, uh, you know. He's just a. In my, when I'm looking in there, I'm thinking that he's the big brother yeah, too. Yeah, he, he is. But then he takes his hat off and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, mate. You know, like I've I've uh, always been. I guess uh, being a bit older and being around the Newey crew and, yeah. and all that scene when I was just hitting my teens. You know, those guys uh, instilled a good sort of wild streak in in sort of the way I wanted to live. And um, Ronnie's got a wild side too, but he's uh, always been a pretty responsible thoughtful guy yep. with a, a lot of uh, good advice not just for me and um, all the yep. people who know him and his yep. mates and stuff but mm. you know like uh, a lot of uh, surfers have come to him for career advice at certain times over the years as well and I've, I've been one of you know a beneficiary of benefiting mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've benefited <laughs> from that from uh, you know just his yeah. steady mind mate yeah he's a, he's a really thoughtful guy I think that's what makes him a great commentator and yeah, yeah it's a it's a good thing to be a little big brother sometimes. That's brotherly oh, love fine. right there. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. isn't it? Just hug that's it out, great. boys. Um, <laughs> most memorable uh, surf session you've had together? Is Ooh. it away or in Australia? It has just, just whatever, whatever session I got completely bailed in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all it comes down to. Have right? you ever had one like it was just the two of you and you're like oh, away no, somewhere? Or... Remember, man, that's a good question. It was, it, it was kind of rare because when we were both working in mags, we were at different places oh, okay. yeah. quite often um, but I don't know nah we've never done a trip together we've never done anything like that maybe a few surfs in yeah you just knew it when we were growing up no we had a surf at home uh, last year oh at a secret spot that yeah. did you know I know you and Luke know and anyone that's oh, seen I do, I the do, documentary I do. knows yeah. and uh, the ways that we'd heard reports um, that have been I really say good. I um, BB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. BB. So uh, we had heard reports that had been firing and the bank had been good. Yeah. And I was just up at uh, Vaughan's place at, at Suffolk and we were like, let's just go have a look tomorrow. And we got there and no one was around. Oh, no mm. way. That's and it, it was like surfing the, you know, the just the dual wave in our childhood, the way that like we always, yeah. everyone talked about and you know, legend of Jeremy Biles out there on big days surfing it by himself and yeah. uh, we surfed and it was probably only three foot on the <laughs> biggest set but it was just perfect yeah. runners yeah. and um, yeah, it was just us out there so that was pretty special. Epic. I was out Epic. there that day. I oh, you were? The, yeah, the, the, the documentary, documentary, documentary yeah. Secret Spot Day. I yeah. got, a, got a call from a mutual friend and he was like, it's pumping, get down here and sure I was like, ah, I'm home! <laughs> and I came down and uh, I don't know if you got footage of the of the wave, but uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's, yes. there's we, one. You got footage. Uh, we won't mention where it is. We won't say where it the is. Local but guys. The, the one wave that you get, like a crazy long one, mm. and I think it clamps you on the end. Yeah, I, yeah. But that one, I was on the inside for oh, that when you first were looking at it, and I looked, turned around, and I looked at you, and I was going, I can't believe I'm surfing my home. <laughs> oh, this secret spot. Yeah. With Ock, and I was like looking at you, and I was just going, "This is the wave." And you didn't day. even take off. No, well, I was looking at you, mate. Your face was just. Like a staffy, just like, ah, just, wanted, I've wanted, never wanted, seen anything like it. <laughs> froth flying everywhere. And I was like, ah, this is the one, this is the one. And uh, when it was worth it when thank the documentary you. came out, mate. Because I was you. going, wow, that's a memorable session, mate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming on the Otcast. I just want to wrap it up with um, who, who mentored you? You guys have had such a great career and it's still going, it's still flourishing. Mm. Who were the guys um, or a guy that mentored you to get where you guys are? Uh, for me, it's definitely um, Neil Ridgeway. Okay. He's uh, he was the deputy editor at Tracks when I started. Yep. He was the editor when I uh, sort of by the time I'd worked there for a little bit. Um, just a crazy passionate surfer. Absolutely loves the history, the storytelling around surfing. He, he like everything mattered. You know, every moment mattered. I remember when um, you were surfing the skins, for example. He was I was at the office back up in Darlinghurst, but he was calling me in between waves going, you should see what's going on down here, it is unbelievable. Like just having a t complete meltdown. And uh, just, you know, I think what he, he instilled in me more than anything was like um, uh, all of this stuff 
you know, all these like this riding of waves and uh, you know these these legends and the competitions and the free surfs and the characters that like everything mattered yeah. uh, and everything contributed to a feeling that ultimately kind of does feel like surfing itself anyway. You know what I mean? It makes it, makes it uh, what we do sliding on bits of energy created by the sun and all that all that stuff it makes it matter mm. and I, I loved that he gave me that so he's definitely Neil Ridge, one of the most yeah, he's a great man yeah. yeah no Neil was uh, definitely uh, for me too uh, well obviously I, I kind of followed Vaughn into that but uh, as far as the commentary goes yep. um, Sterling Howland who was working yes. at Billabong back in the day yep. who you know really well yep. um, he sort of saw potential in me to, to yep. do the broadcasting yep. and put me on CT events, which was huge. And Mark Warren also, who yep. was uh, working at Quicksilver at the time, heading up their broadcast. Um, so kind of those two guys for me, they, they both, um, Sterling had a, a lot of experience in marketing mm. and producing the broadcast and Mark had TV experience. So uh, yeah, I learned a lot working with those guys. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Otcast. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Thank you, mate. That's another Otcast. You! Oh, God, there's too many jellyfish. It's such a wonderful ride. It's such a wonderful ride.